Welcome back, everybody. It's episode 10 of the Evolution Video Podcast. It's Paddy here, as always, joined by Andy White, all the way from Tropical West Beach, St. Mary. Um, it's just going to be us today. We put out a tweet earlier asking people to join, but you were all checking. Nobody showed up. So it's us. Um, we're going to blast through this one as quick as we can. So the first piece of news is, of course, we launched the Fusion Search capability um, over the last week. Feedback's been great. We've actually got the first wave of stats in. So we've started to mine some of that data. And we've taken a section of the last 2,000 searches that were made across the store using the new search capability. And so the stats are quite interesting, so I'm going to pass you over to Andy, who can talk us through that. Cheers, Paddy. Um, yeah, quite quite surprising stats, actually. So these are the stats of what people have been searching for on your store using the search box. Um, and, that, you know, there's, there's a few obvious ones in there. But if I read you the top ten, um, going from one, so the top most searched for item on the Evolution stores in the UK and Ireland was whiteboard. So your customers looking for whiteboards on your store, then staplers, then five star, then trays, then racks, then staplers, then office stationery, uh, then Lexmark, and then mouse coming in at 10. Um, and then some other things just in the top 50 here, which were good to see, but um, maybe surprising as well, is things like um, stamps in at 16, um, tea and coffee and sugar are all in the top 20, uh, soaps within the top 30, uh, things like laptops, printers, keyboards, as we saw mouse was in the uh, top 10. So some real interesting stuff in there and it's not until you really get up to the, f the, the, the low 30s, high 30s that we actually see product codes, which is what we always thought people would search for on the stores, but actually they're really looking for some interesting things. And my favourite one on there uh, is the seventh most searchable thing, which is office stationery, spelt the right way, which is good to see. <laughs> so I think, Andy, just thinking on my feet here, that data could be really valuable for these guys when it comes to optimizing their SEO campaigns and their PPC. So maybe we'll give it a couple of weeks to build up some a meaningful sample and then we could publish maybe the top 50 yeah. on a monthly basis. So I'll take a note of that um, and watch out for that coming over the next couple of weeks. Um, that should help. Um, next up on the rundown is a debate that was kicked off this morning on Twitter. Um, reference Amazon. And again, Andy's probably the best guy to guide us through this. He's got some pretty strong opinions on this. Once again, mate, over to you. Thanks, Paddy. Yeah. Um it was. Um, I saw that Steve, uh, um, Office Randy, this morning had, had sort of taken to Twitter to voice how um, he believes that uh, people, the industry, should stand up against Amazon um, due to their quite creative approach to paying tax. Some people would say they don't pay enough tax. Um, there's a lot of evidence to support that. Um, and it was just David, David at XBD, and and, and Steve, um, you know, saying what they could do, engaging manufacturers, engaging wholesalers to try and stand up against Amazon. And, it got me thinking, really, that actually, I think that you, sh the industry, should see Amazon as more of a friend than a foe. Um, the way that Amazon works today is, 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 is there's not some giant um, Amazon isn't a giant competitor of yours. It's actually a platform that dealers can use to sell office supplies on. And if you, you know, if, for example, if you go onto onto Google and type in, say, something like Five Star Lever Arch File, the first two results, the first two organic results are um, Amazon pages and if you click through onto those pages you'll see that it's not Amazon selling those lever arch files it's dealers using Amazon to sell those lever arch files um, so it's really become a bit like an eBay you know where it's where it's a platform and you know you don't see any um, anyone complaining about eBay seeing eBay as a threat it's actually just a tool you can use to, to sell more products so um, yeah I, th I just think that we should as an industry maybe get a little bit more behind Amazon rather than seeing it as a, as a, as a threat uh, if you look at the book industry, if you wind the clock back maybe 10, 15 years, book shops and all these sorts of things saw Amazon as this giant threat, and they're quite right to do so because there's not so many independent bookstores around. But you know, was that w would it have been another way if Amazon hadn't have come along and taken their business? But the, the truth is now that um, 
Amazon Books. If you buy a book from Amazon, chances are it's going to come from an independent bookseller um, who, who's selling via Amazon. So the industry needs to be looking at it the same way um, and, and not, not seeing it as a, as a big threat that's going to come and steal a lunch. We need to get involved. Yeah, I, th I think some dealers don't know that. They think Amazon's a retailer, and they are, but they're also a platform like eBay where independent sellers can piggyback on the back of their infrastructure and sell product, and it's just another channel. I think everybody needs um, as many channels as they can get. Selling direct through your website's a channel. Selling on the telephone's a channel. Selling through field sales, people are channels. And um, selling on Amazon, eBay, Play, and, and other platforms are all legitimate and valid channels. I get where Steve and, and David's coming from. You know, it does really suck, mm -hmm. this culture, where we I have think companies who don't pay any tax because they employ people and pay PAYE and I sorry, that argument is crazy. But you know, that that's not something that's gonna get fixed anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I prefer to live in the world as it is and deal with the, the stuff that we can deal with and international tax affairs is something that's largely out of our control. I think the thing is yeah, I think um well, let's go and pick Although it, it outside. Be in my control, God damn it. Yeah. Uh, let's go and pick it outside Amazon's offices, you know. Um, I don't think that'll do much, but um, I think the other thing to, to mention as well is that the reason why Amazon is so successful is is not necessarily because they, they, they can charge lower prices based on their, the money they're saving on tax. In fact, um, you know, if you if you imagine the last time you bought something on Amazon, um, ask yourself whether you actually checked whether that was the best price. Um, I know recently I was looking to buy a new TV and I was going to buy it from Curry's and I thought oh, I'll check it on Amazon just to see if it's cheaper because I've got this sort of aura that Amazon should be cheaper and actually Amazon was was probably about 30 to 40 percent more expensive um, than, than Curry's was so you know it's, it's not the case that Amazon are being successful because they're the cheapest they're successful because of that that um, you know ecosystem where you can get what you want when you want it and some stuff you don't even know you want it some cool stuff that they link you to using their very cool algorithms of upselling and cross-selling and the fact that you know with Amazon it's going to turn up and it's going to be, you know, if you've got a problem it's going to be sorted out. And that's, that's really the whole, the whole customer experience is what they sell on and price is only a small part of that. I think that piece cannot be overlooked. It goes beyond sales and marketing, product selection, experience. Those things are great. But Amazon occupies a very special place in people's minds. It creates an expectation that it just works. Everything works. So when you order it, it is going to show up the next day, and you don't need to worry about that. You just assume that because it's Amazon, they'll get it right. And that logistical piece cannot be overlooked. By the way, I think that's something dealers can aspire to. I don't think the average dealer can be Amazon and, and have that level of, of service and mind share on a national basis, but they can be the Amazon and occupy that same place in the mind of local businesses um, that buy their office products from them. Yeah, People I think a good deal, a good user experience, and you know, above all other things, they expect when they place an order of, for it to show up the next day. Mm -hmm. And you know, strip it back to basics. That's the three or four fundamental things I would be focusing on if I was a dealer. Yes, I agree. That's good. So, so there you go. In summary, Amazon friend, not necessarily foe. Although it would be good if they paid more tax. But legitimate points nonetheless about the tax. Yes. Um, okay, moving on from Amazon, next on the rundown. Um, over the next few days, as we go into early next week, Monday, Tuesday, you'll start to know, uh, notice a new notifications area appear just above the welcome dashboard. So you guys may not know this, but when we do things like this video blogs or Michael does a new video on a support topic, um, the biggest challenge we have is getting that material in front of you guys. So the only ways that we have to do that is through email marketing. And only 50% of the emails get opened. And Twitter. And we've got a fairly big following on Twitter. There's something like 720 people follow us on Twitter. But only a small percentage of them are customers. So we've got to think of what's the best way of getting messages to customers. And so we're going to put this notifications area in the admin screen because that's where you, got, you guys go every day, multiple times a day. And you'll say, hey, there's a new blog available, click here, which will link you to that page on our blog post. Um, all of the stuff we try and do in these blogs is meaningful, helpful, should have some benefit for dealers. It's not an ego trip for Andy and I. We've <laughs> <laughs> got better things to do. Um, you know, it's just trying to be as, as upfront and accessible and 
and pass on as much information as we think would be relevant for you guys and help you in your businesses. So please take the time to try and see these things. Some of them will just be conversations like this. Other videos will be instructional and they'll be related to certain parts of the software or support issues we've came up against that week. So there'll be a whole mixed bag of stuff. So watch out for that new notifications area coming in the next few working days. Um, on that note, Michael has been working really hard on getting some more video content related to support topics and some sales and marketing topics and I'll just pass it back to Andy to talk about the most recent one that will be coming out over the next day or two. Yeah, sure. So as, as Paddy said, Michael's been um, putting together some videos for you guys just just covering off some of the more common uh, support queries and, and, and marketing queries we have. Um, the first one he's done, um, which, he, which will be going out very soon, which is uh, Basics of search engine optimization on your store. Um, it's a little, you know, it's starting real basic things, um, things that you can do today with no previous SEO knowledge, search engine optimization, I should say, um, and uh, that can take minutes, but will actually start to affect the search rankings of your store, start to get you higher up on the Google rankings. So that video will be going out very soon, and um, more videos like that will follow on. So it's all, all good. Hey guys, let's just finish on a top tip, right? So top tip, this product that we use to record these um, videos is called Google Hangouts and it's completely free and I've always thought this would be a great deal for, a great tool for dealers who manage external staff. So if you've got a field sales based team, if you've got guys who telecommute, work from home, this is a great piece of software that can bring all those guys together. Um, I think this video part of Andy supports up to 10 people yeah. on the same video call so that would cover most of the sales teams that dealers employ these days so if you wanted to bring your sales people into a, a video call every Monday morning even from the car they can do that because there's a Google Hangout for iPhone Android and all the you know major mobile platforms. Not while driving though. Yeah don't do it while driving. <laughs> Another top tip bonus feature so yeah Google Hangouts is great it doesn't cost the bean you know this is technology that five years ago would have cost you a million dollars from um, Cisco's Telco, telepresence Cisco, yeah. department um, and now it's for nothing and it's the glue that holds this business together. Evolution have people in three different countries across four different time zones and things like this are the glue that holds all of that together. So we love Google Hangouts and we think dealers should be using that as well to bring their outside salespeople, teleworkers, um, bring them in remotely. Yes. Good shout, good shout. Andy, bring us home. Well, that, that's about it, guys, for this week. The, the only little thing I just wanted was to ask you all a favour, actually. Um, you've all been enjoying the new Fusion data. Um, the feedback has been, you know, we, we knew it was good and we knew you guys would like it, but the feedback has been nothing short of incredible. Um, but as we always said, it was always just the starting point where we are Fusion. It's got a long way to go and it will never, ever be finished because the products are always changing. There's always more information. Who would have thought 10 years ago that you'd have videos of products on websites? So who knows what the next thing will be? Um, um, and we are engaged with a, a number of top manufacturers at the moment, some brand owners, and there's lots of irons in the fire, and we should have some great news about some new new, new brand owners um, supporting Fusion very soon. But there are literally thousands. I've been going through them, um, and there's some guys that um, we just won't get to talk to, but um, could benefit from being involved in Fusion. There could be guys with whose products you really support and, and, and will sell well, and obviously, if their product data is within Fusion, they'll sell more, because the better the product data, the more sales everyone gets so I'm asking you kindly if there's anyone you're talking to any brand owners get them to get in touch with me and um, we can talk to them about the benefits of fusion and how they can sell more products via you guys which is a win-win situation for everyone so yeah just get them to get in touch with me wise words indeed okay that'll do us for this one guys we'll be back next Friday with the next installment until then have a great weekend and we'll catch you soon see you bye. guys bye 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 bye, bye.